Hello, and this is again Physics for the 21st Century. Welcome back. My name is Greg Perugini, and here we are with our next topic, Bernoulli's equation. Now, we've already learned a little bit about fluid dynamics in the previous topic, and as you've learned, how a fluid flows through a uh, particular uh, hose or tube or conduit and the, and the fluid could be air, it could be uh, water or any fluid or gas that flows. It's all affected by uh, it, all these factors influence each other. Gravity, velocity, the density of the fluid, the height. One might be higher up than the other. If we're talking about a tank and we'll do that in a little bit the amount of pressure at one end versus the other, how the uh, pipe might be constricted in a certain area, whether that pipe be uh, a hose, a nozzle that you would close, and of course you get a higher velocity out the other end, the equation of continuity if you remember. Uh, you can have a constriction in an area either through that hose or like in an artery or a vein getting uh, plaque and constricting. So if we take all those factors together, we get something called Bernoulli's equation. And I'm going to just write it down here because we're going to use it in a few problems. And what you see here is not only do we have the, uh, the relationship with speed, as I'm writing, but we have also a relationship with distance and height and pressure. And what Bernoulli's equation really says is that uh, all the other things being equal, if I change the pressure, something has to give on the other side. So we have an equation. It's a statement of the conservation of energy being with height. You have a potential energy and a conversion into uh, kinetic energy and the equation of continuity. So uh, it's all other things being equal. If I change the speed in something, it would increase the pressure, right? I change this speed if all the other things being equal if I go from this speed to this speed something would have to give either the pressure would change maybe the height changes a change in pressure could, could, could increase density a change in height could increase pressure so let's let's look at a couple of examples here on how this would work Let's take a real simple example, for instance, a uh, real simple one that you see often. You have a tank, and we're going to say this at the top, we're going to say it's very large. Could be a reservoir, and I got a very small hole at the bottom. If the height of the water in this the height of the water is, let's say, uh, I don't know, eight meters. It doesn't look like I have enough information to figure out what the velocity here is out this little hole at the bottom. But when we look at this equation, we can cancel out a lot of stuff. The pressure, we're going to assume the atmospheric pressure here versus here is zero. Or I should say, no difference between the two. The difference being zero. So we don't have to worry about those two. How fast this is going down, if this is a very large tank, we could say that this goes to zero because 
it's not moving down very fast on a very large container. The ratio of V1 to V2 uh, is a very large number. Very small amount of velocity for this going down versus this going out this hole. So we can make that go to zero. If the height, if we say that this is zero height and this is eight meters up here, then this would be eight and here would be zero. So this could go to zero. What do we have left at that point? All we have left, if we also assume that the density of an object of a compressible of an uncompressible fluid doesn't change water even if I'm at the bottom of the Mariana Trench doesn't compress that much and certainly wouldn't compress in just eight meters so the density goes away so on this side all we have left is G and the height and on the other side all we have is since this goes away and this goes away and the density goes away, one half V2 squared. And then this of course gets down to, you can write it in terms of velocity, and in this example, about 12.5 meters per second. And you've seen these water towers uh, all through towns throughout uh, the uh, United States and elsewhere. That is how your water pressure is regulated by Bernoulli's equation. That height through their pipes give uh, the water pressure necessary for you at your spigot. Now, in some areas, of course, they have assist with, uh, with pumps, but you get the idea, right? That's a very simple example of Bernoulli's equation. Let me go to something a little bit more complex. We'll keep this up here. Let's go to something a little more complex. I have something often called a venturi tube and I can measure the pressure here and the pressure at this widest point widest point would be about there call that P1 and P2 and say this is a device that uh, is at a service station pumping gasoline gasoline is going through this. Gasoline has a density of 700 kilograms per meter cubed. Okay? So we want to find, based on this information, if I know that the difference in pressure the change in pressure is equal to 1.2 e to the third pascals. We want to know what is the velocity here. So that's what we're trying to figure out, the velocity there. Well, how we do that? Well, you see Bernoulli's equation. First thing I can do is cancel out the height. There's really no height difference here that I need to worry about. Let me just erase it. We know that P1 minus P2 is this. So I could just put that on this side. 1.2 times 10 to the 3. 
plus one half times that density of 700. But how do I get the velocity? How do I get that? Well, if you remember your equation of continuity, we can solve this if I knew the radius here. And let's say I do know that radius, so this being 2.4 centimeters, and this being closed down to 1.2 centimeters. If I use pi r squared, okay. And this is actually, this, this side is 1.2 e to the negative 2, 2.4 e to the negative 2 squared, there, times velocity 2. You're going to get that velocity 1 is e equal to a quarter of velocity 2. Intuitively, that makes a little bit of sense here, right? If I close off the nozzle, like in a hose, when I go to a smaller uh, diameter, you get a faster velocity. But that is based on these numbers in the equation of continuity, that the velocity in, of 1 is 0.25, the velocity of 2. Well, I can plug that in here. And we know that equals 1 half times 700 times velocity 2 squared. We have only one variable here. We can solve it then, right? So we have 1,200 plus this comes down to 0 0.0260 plus I should just write it out. 350 times 0 0.0625 velocity 2 squared equals 300 velocity 2 squared. Again, the 1200 is equal to 21.875. Velocity 2 squared, if I do this math here, twelve hundred plus, I should say, twenty one point eight seven five V two squared is equal to three fifty V two squared. Wrote that wrong there. And then you subtract it from that side divide, and then take the square root, very easy to solve this, right? What you would do is subtract 21.85 from 350, whatever that number is, divide 1200 by that number, and then take the square root to get rid of the square. And you're going to get 1.9 meters per second. This the velocity here, 1.9 meters per second. So, if you're looking at Bernoulli's equation, this is going to take some thinking, right? You look at this equation, you need to know your way around that equation 
Obviously, if we're at the same height, you don't have to worry about these two. They would cancel each other out, right? Density, though, may change depending on what fluid you have. Pressure between two given areas might change. If it's at a different height, of course, you have to take that into account. And as we did in our example, we used the, continu uh, the equation of continuity to get a relationship between velocity and solving simultaneous equations. So, in conclusion, you know, as I said, know your way around the equation. A change in pressure can cause a change in either uh, a force or an area. A change in density by other factors may change volume. On large openings, we can reduce this equation, like I did with the tank. Remember your equation of continuity and practice. So there you have it, Bernoulli's equation. Good luck.